Hey folks, how you doing tonight? Homestead Ed here. Tonight I want to show you how to make some simple, delicious salsa. Um, I'm just going to give you a basic recipe. Generally when I make up my salsa, I, I try to set aside about 24 pints for the year. And I'll do a few different variations. This is a really simple way to get started. I'm just going to do a pint tonight show you how to make up a pint and then you could take that recipe and you could just you know triple it or quadruple it whatever you want to do with it now what I like to use for my salsa is slicing tomatoes um, it's just what I prefer this happens to be a beef steak but it doesn't really matter all that much okay so whatever kind of tomatoes you can grow grow if you have to buy them at the store buy them at the store that's fine um, but really, garden fresh tomatoes are the best to go with this. So what we're going to use tonight is three uh, these uh, beef steak tomatoes. So three, you can kind of see, nice sized tomatoes. One jalapeno pepper. What we're making tonight is a mild salsa. So what I'm going to do when I cut this jalapeno pepper up, I'm going to pull the seeds out of there. The heat from the pepper is from the seeds really. I mean you'll get some heat from the pepper itself but the heat is really from the seeds so if you want to spice it up a simple way to do it is leave the seeds in. That's going to make it a lot hotter. You like it really hot use a hotter pepper. Tonight we're making a mild one something for you to start with and work from there. Um, red onion. Now I'll say in the recipe a half a red onion, but I mean a half a big red onion. This is a little guy, so I'm probably going to use just about the entire thing here. Garlic. We're going to use two cloves of garlic. Sometimes people get a little bit confused with what's a bulb, what's a clove, how do you talk about garlic. This is a bulb of garlic. We snap this open. Inside we're going to have cloves. And what we want is about two cloves this recipe. Here's a clove. Here's another clove. We'll, I'll peel the paper off of this and we're going to use about two. If you like it more, use more. That's fine. Quarter of a lime. Now what's fantastic about this is everything here I've grown in my garden and even the lime. I have one of those little lime trees I bought years ago and uh, I get a few limes off it. You see them in the catalogs for like five bucks. And I get maybe like nine, ten limes a year off of it. So even this, we're going to use a quarter of a lime in here. And some cilantro, uh, salt and pepper, of course, and some cilantro. I would love to use fresh cilantro, but I made a mistake and uh, I, I started a little bit bed up in Pennsylvania of cilantro. And I made a mistake. I'm not up there. I didn't water it. It died on me. So this is some dried cilantro I have from last year here. We're going to use some dried. If you don't have fresh, you could use dried. You can mix things up any way you need to do. Unfortunately, this year, I'm going to have to use some dried. Uh, just a little bit more on the cilantro. Cilantro is pretty fantastic to grow. You grow it. You have fresh cilantro. You let it go to seed. The seed is called coriander. You'll see in many recipes you need coriander. Well, that's how it goes to seed. I did plant some more, so hopefully next time I make this, I might have some fresh. And uh, just this time, I'm going to throw in a couple of these. Now, this is not in the recipe, but I'm going to throw in a couple of these little yellow pear tomatoes. I got a whole bunch sitting around. Add a little bit of color to it. Well, I don't want to take all night doing this. Oh, and I want to show you how I'm going to process it. My wife threw one of these pampered chef parties and they give you little free gifts. So one of the free gifts was this mini food processor. It's a hand operated food processor. So she brought it, brought it home to me thinking I would like it. Well, I'll tell you, I love it. If I was doing a big batch of this, I would not use this. I'd use the big food processor. You can do this in a blender if you don't have a food processor. But this thing, I think, is the greatest thing in the world. I like it because you can judge how much you're chopping everything up. 
and uh, you don't need any power to use it. That's good for prepping. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this together a little bit, and then I'll turn the video back on, I'll show you what it looks like, we'll take it from there. Okay, so I just wanted to show you a little bit, uh, I've got it a little bit put together here, and I wanted to show you a little bit more about what I'm doing. Now what I like to do with the tomatoes is I like to core them. I, I personally, it doesn't matter if you like seeds in there, it doesn't matter, that's fine. You could just cut, cut them up into chunks, throw them in there, that's cool. But I don't like too many seeds in my salsa. So what I like to do is I start out by coring the tomato, just taking the knife, cutting around there, getting the stem off, and then I'll cut it into quarters. I'll scoop off the seeds at the end and uh, get a few of them out of there. Now I'm going to chop these up again just into like eighths and throw them into my food processor. I've got the jalapeno together, the garlic, the onions. I'm going to chop these up a little bit more, throw them in here. Ah, what the heck? Let me show you real quick how this thing works. We're just going to throw, here's my garlic. Throw that in there. And this is a really simple, I, I'll tell you, I really love this thing. Snap the top one and give it a couple spins. Anybody who's into prepping, this is something you would really love to have. And generally, like I said, if I was doing a big batch, I would do a, it in the, in the regular food processor. But for something like this, I think this little tool is the coolest thing in the world. So what I'm going to do is get all this stuff in here little bit of the lime juice, some salt and pepper, process it up. Then I'm going to put it in a, in a saucepan and just bring it to a simmer. Just get all of that in, uh, incorporated together. Turn the camera back on. I'll show you when it's simmering. And then maybe we'll can it. Okay, so we're just about done here. I've got all my ingredients mixed together. I put in the uh, cilantro and the lime. And I brought this up to a simmer. Now this is just a little bit of the leftover here. I've got about, I'd say a pint and a half. So what I did is I took a good pint of that and I put it into a mason jar. And I'm going to can this. Now canning is really a very simple process. The most important thing to do here is make sure that everything is clean and, and sterile. So what I generally do is I make sure my jaws are clean, my lids I always buy new. You want to buy those new every time. And uh, then I take everything and I boil it in hot water first, just to make sure it's sterilized. Um, it, it, if you pour it in, if you buy one of these cheap little kits, it comes with a funnel that will pour it right in there. You get anything on the top, make sure you wipe that top clean, because what you want to make sure of is that there's a good seal here between your jar and your lid. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do what they call a, a water bath canning and it's just a matter of boiling up some water. I'm going to take this, plop it in the water, let it go for about 15 minutes. Tomatoes are a great thing to can because they're high in acid and, and that really helps them from going bad. If you're going to do anything else, especially if you're going to do like a meat or something like that, make sure you check it out, figure out how to do it. Sometimes you need to use what they call a, a pressure canner, especially with meats. Uh, uh, I'm not at the point of doing meats yet. But for this, I think we're ready to go. I just want to go over really quick the recipe. Oh, and when these come out of this boiling bath, I'll leave them in there for 15 minutes. When they come out, I'll set them to the side. And when you hear them pop, that means you'll hear a little click. That means the, the lid has snapped down on there and you're good to go. I just want to go over the recipe really quick once again. Two to three large tomatoes, one jalapeno pepper, seeded if you want it a little uh, milder, two cloves of garlic, a tablespoon, uh, not a tablespoon, a teaspoon of cilantro, salt and pepper, quarter of a lime, and uh, like three quarters of a red onion. 
depending on the size, half to three quarters of a red onion. Chop it up in a food, food processor and give it a taste. I guarantee you're going to love this. Well, thanks for watching.